Hallo, ich bin wieder da. Willkommen bei 7 Days. Starting off the news this week, the first ever image of a black hole has been released. The black hole is from a far away galaxy and is 3 million times the size of Earth and larger than our entire solar system. The image of the 300 million light year away black hole was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, which is a network of 8 different telescopes. The bright ring of fire surrounding the hole is caused by incredibly hot gas falling into it. This light is brighter than all the other stars in its galaxy, M87, combined, which is why we can see it all the way from our little rock. In other news, the question of methane on Mars has just become a little bit confused. A European-Russian satellite, the Trace Gas Orbiter, or TGO, has, despite its ability to detect at exceedingly low levels, found no methane in Mars' atmosphere. Methane had previously been detected by NASA's Curiosity rover in 2013. This has raised all sorts of questions and possibilities, as methane shouldn't really be able to be removed from the atmosphere that quickly, leading some to suggest that Curiosity's data was wrong. Either way, the search for life on Mars continues. Starting off this week's very exciting paleontology news, a brand new genus and species of prehistoric whale has been described. As you know, we're big fans of ancient whales on this channel, so Ben is very happy about this one. I'd like to let you know Ben wrote this part of the script, so he's, he's, he's gone mad apparently and is now referring to himself in the third person. Anyway, unearthed in 42.6 million year old rocks in Peru, this new animal has been named Perigocetus pacificus. An incredibly well-preserved specimen, this fossil indicates that this animal was both a capable swimmer, likely utilising its tail a great deal for propulsion, but it was also still able to walk on land, since its pelvis was firmly attached to the rest of the body and it possessed small hooves on the ends of its toes. This discovery also supports the idea that ancient cetaceans reached the New World by first crossing the South Atlantic, and that this occurred less than 10 million years after they originated in Asia. Seems like it's time to update our whale evolution videos already. Yay. Also this week, a new species of ancient human has just been announced. Published in the journal Nature, the paper reports that a toe bone had been discovered in a cave on the island of Luzon in the Philippines in 2007, and that now 12 more bones have been uncovered, all of which display a unique combination of features, suggesting that they belong to a previously unknown hominin species. This species has been named Homo isonensis, and the remains represent at least three separate individuals, and additionally show that this species would have been fairly small-bodied, likely standing at less than four foot tall. The bones are dated to around 67,000 years ago, and the study explains how the presence of another species of Homo on a Southeast Asian island, since we already know of Homo floresiensis, shows just how significant islands in this area were for the evolution of our lineage. Next up, we welcome another new species, this time from a metrorhynchid crocodilomorph from the Upper Jurassic of Germany. This specimen was very well preserved, and displays several characteristics that allowed paleontologists to distinguish it from other known species, and it has now been named Cricosaurus bambagensis. The discovery has also suggested that the crocodilomorph fossil record needs to be re-examined, as it may in fact have had a greater biodiversity than we realised. And finally, paleontologists have discovered Cthulhu, an exceptionally well-preserved fossil of an ancient sea cucumber relative from the Silurian was recreated in 3D, and examinations of the specimen showed that it was a species new to science. So, obviously, the scientists named it Solacina Cthulhu, since paleontologists have a great sense of humour when it comes to naming things, remember Thanos? Anyway, Cthulhu has aided our understanding of how early sea cucumbers evolved, and grants a view of what the internal structure of these prehistoric organisms was like. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science, it was a long one. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.